Hello, Angie Talks family. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever your time difference may be, this is your girl, Angelina, and for short. I am your 21st century virtual nurse. Call me 21st century virtual nurse and let me simply respond, hello, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome, Angie Talks family. Let's talk. Look at the picture here. What does it show? It shows C, C vitamin. So we're going to talk about vitamin C, the benefits of vitamin C and then vitamin C deficiency, what it causes. So I will be showing the pictures along as I talk. So what is vitamin C? Vitamin C, also called ascorbic acid, is a nutrient your body needs to form blood vessels, cartilage, muscles, and collagen in bones. Vitamin C is also vital to your body's healing process. It helps in your body's healing process. Like if you have a wound or something, or something, vitamin C helps with the healing process. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps protect your cells against the effects of free radicals. Molecules produced when your free radicals are the molecules produced when your body breaks down food or is exposed to tobacco, smoke, and radiation from the sun, x-ray, or other sources. Free radicals might play a role in heart disease, cancer, and other diseases. So vitamin C also helps your body absorb and store iron. As I speak along, I will be showing the pictures and what vitamin C does. So these are the, the fruits and vegetables here are some of the of the of the ways we get uh, vitamin C. We see mangoes, pepper, tomatoes, broccoli, parcels, um, pineapple, kiwi. I'll be showing along. So whatever you have at your local stores or market, you grab it and then you take it. It's very important to add fruits and vegetables because our body doesn't produce the vitamin C. We get it from the food we eat and it's water soluble. So it we need to continuously take it. So our body doesn't store it. We need to keep taking it during day out. It has to be a conscious effort to eat food rich in vitamin C. So because your body doesn't produce vitamin C, you need to get it from your diet. Vitamin C is found in citrus fruit, berries, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, cabbage, Brussels sprout, broccoli, and spinach, and a whole lot. Vitamin C is also available as an oral supplement. It's also av available as an oral supp supplement, typically in the form of capsules and chewable tablets. Since the COVID started, we've been talking about boosting our immune system. A lot of people have been taking vitamin C, but it seems it's going, people are beginning to forget themselves and they haven't been taking it or the, if, they, they don't take it religiously as they used to be. Prior to COVID, I used to have colds sometimes, minor coughs and stuff like that. But since I took it religiously and I, I still take it, I haven't, I've noticed I haven't been having the cold that I usually have when I wake up in the morning. So it helps. It helps a lot. Most people get enough vitamin C from a healthy diet. Vitamin C deficiency is more likely in people who smoke or are exposed to secondary smoking, have sudden gastrointestinal condition or certain types of cancer, 
or have a limited diet that doesn't doesn't regularly include include fruits and vegetables do you know when we talk about vitamin c the first fruit that comes into mind is citrus fruits like like oranges lemon or lime did you know that guava has more vitamin c it's loaded with more vitamin c than the, um, it's loaded with more vitamin C than the oranges and the lemon and the limes. Guava is loaded with nutrients. It has more vitamin C than oranges. And guava is also rich in other antioxidants. Antioxidants protect our cells from free radicals. And has a number of great health benefits, including boosting immune system guava boosts our immune system the only thing i don't like about guava are the seeds they are too much that's the only thing i don't like about guava and i think guava doesn't get the attention it doesn't get the emphasis more than it gets less emphasis than the oranges and the limes because they are not readily available in most places so it's a good immune booster it also helps improve digestion. It makes you go because it's also high in fiber and it helps re reduce blood sugar levels. So I think diabetics too may benefit because guava is not that sweet. We have different kinds of guavas. It's not like very, very sweet um, fruits. And it's also known to improve heart health, relieve painful periods. So our young ladies can also um, benefit from guava. And then it has 100 milligram of guava contains approximately 230 two milligrams of ascorbic acid. So guava has a lot of um, vitamin C compared to the, the traditional oranges, the limes, and the lemons that we we know. Um, let me mention some of the vegetables too that has more vitamin C than orange, like thyme. Thyme is um a green leafy. It's like it looks like flowery thyme. Parsley, parsley is plant-based non um iron. It helps absorb iron and prevent ane um, iron deficiency anemia. Vitamin C increases the absorption of non iron, which helps prevent and treat iron deficiency anemia. Kale is also high in vitamin c kale is also a green leafy vegetable i don't have it here but kale is a green leafy vegetable that is high in vitamin k vitamin k helps our blood to clot it's a good clotting factor when somebody people come to the hospital and their blood work shows their levels is low we give them vitamins vitamin k iv to if they are at risk of bleeding we do vitamin k tests and then we give them iv vitamin k and kiwi is very good just like any green leafy vegetables when you boil it the anti the nutrients and the antioxidants it kills it but when you steam it or just fry it a little bit on low heat. It brings out the antioxidant more. Broccoli is also good in, it has also um, vitamin C in it. Brussels sprout is another good source of vitamin C, strawberries and papaya. But bear in mind, if you are at a place that guava is readily available, guava has high vitamin C than the oranges and the limes and the lemons before i continue let me keep on showing these pictures so if you are you just look at the pictures and whatever is available to you 
when you go to the market or grocery stores you include it in your diet all this i'm showing a high in cabbage also has some amount of vitamin c just look at the at these pictures carefully whatever is available at your end you get it and vitamin c can also come in chewable forms like this when you are buying vitamin c i buy vitamin c with the fruits the pictures of the fruits around um, on it i just there are a lot of um ascorbic acid in the market that that are not um, really vitamin c cornstarch are also used to make vitamin c that those ones are synthetic if you want a real vitamin c either you eat it the raw fruits and vegetables or you buy the ones with the pictures on the bottles just to make sure at least it's a sign that you are getting closer to vitamin c if not 100 percent vitamin c vitamin c can also comes come in capsules or in powdered form you pour it in water like this and and you drink lack of vitamin c lack of vitamin c or vitamin c deficiency severe vitamin c deficiency can lead to a disease called scurvy scurvy was a, um, a disease that sailors people who go to the sea in the 18th century they used to have it a lot because when they go at the seas for months they don't have any fruits and vegetables so they came back with sailors who used to go on on seas they came back with scurvies i will show a picture of scurvy how it's it's a skin disease it affects the the teeth when you brush your teeth cons with, you have constant bleeding because of lack of vitamin c another picture is here this looks it doesn't look um attractive at all this is another picture when you brush your teeth and it affects the skin as well it, it has swelling and bruises and sometimes even bleeding like i showed over here these are all pictures of scurvy when you lack vitamin c this is what happens because vitamin c remember it's it it's aids in healing when you have a scar when you have a wound or something it heal it helps in the in the healing process help skin to rejuvenate so if you are lacking in it this is what happens to the skin okay so the scurvy can cause um vitamin c deficiency can lead to a disease called scurvy which causes anemia bleeding gums brushing and poor wound healing these are all the like it affects the skin bleeding gum like we've seen here and then when you brush your teeth too it bleeds if you take vitamin c for its antioxidant properties keep in mind that the supplement might might not offer the same benefits as naturally occurring antioxidant in food so it's better to get it straight from the food why you can get the antioxidant that you need the recommended daily amount of vitamin C is 90 milligrams for adult, adult men and 75 milligrams for adult women. This is just a suggestion. It's not an order or a prescription. Talk to your pharmacist or your doctor before you take any supplements. So like what's evidence um, research on the use of vitamin c for specific conditions shows like cancer eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables might lower your risk of many types of cancer such as breast colon and lung cancer however it's not clear whether this protective effect is related to the vitamin c content in the food 
Taking oral vitamin C supplement doesn't appear to offer the same benefit. So it's better to get the full benefit of vitamin C. It's better to get it from directly from your diet. The common quotes, the common quotes, I can testify to it. I can testify to it that when you take eat food high in vitamin C, it helps with the, with the common cold. Taking oral vitamin C supplement won't prevent the common cold. Evidence also shows that the benefit of regularly taking vitamin C supplements to reduce the duration or severity of a cold are minimal. But when you eat fruits and um, fruits and vegetables high in vitamin C, it helps with that. But taking the supplement doesn't really help that much. Taking oral vitamin C supplements in combination with other vitamins and minerals seem to prevent age-related macular degeneration from worsening. Macular degeneration is an eye disease. Some studies also suggest that people who have higher levels of vitamin C in their diet have a lower risk of developing cataract. Cataract is also an eye disease. The need for vitamin C is increased by fever. Remember I said your body doesn't produce the vitamin C. So when you are sick, the need for vitamin C really, really increases with fever because it helps fight infection. It's an immune booster. It's increased by fever, infl inflammation, diarrhea, smoking, hypothyroidism, iron deficiency, cold or heat stress, surgery, burns, and protein deficiency. After weeks or months, the deficiency causes non-specific symptoms, example, weakness, lassitude, irritability, and then later on, connective tissue is affected. It causes follicular hyperkeratosis, colloid, coid hair, swollen and bleeding gums, like I showed in the picture, loose teeth, poor wound healing, and spontaneous hemorrhage. Spontaneous hemorrhage is bleeding. Spontaneous bleeding. Hemorrhage stands for bleeding. In patients who have skin or gingival symptoms or risk factors for the deficiency, measure the as ascorbic acid levels. Treat with supplements, ascorbic acid, and a nutritious diet. If you have all these signs, take each diet or nutrient-filled vitamin C food and then take the supplement as well. Apart from the bleeding gum and the scurvy, vitamin, some vitamin C, vitamin C deficiency, some of the symptoms can be subtle and it would take months to detect. One of them is rough, bumpy skin. So vitamin C plays a key role in collagen production. Collagen is a protein that is abundant in connective tissues like skin, hair, joint, bones, and blood vessels. So when vitamin C levels are low, a skin condition known as keratosis pilaris can develop. In this condition, bumpy chicken skin forms on the back of the upper arms, thighs, or buttocks due to the buildup of keratin protein inside the pores, inside your pores. So keratosis pillars, pillaris caused by vitamin C deficiency typically appears after three to five months of inadequate intake and resolves with supplements. So when you start taking vitamin C supplement, the good ones, the high quality ones, it's it stops. It stops. So another sign is called corkscrew-shaped body hair. Vitamin C deficiency can also cause hair to grow in bent or coiled shapes due to defects that develop in the protein structure 
of hair as it grows. This ones, those of us with kinky hair, we might not see it, but what we can, we can, um, we can determine by how much her hair falls. So corkscrew hair shaped, corkscrew shaped hair is one of the hallmark signs of vitamin C deficiency, but may not be obvious. Because the damaged hair are more likely to break off or fall out. Hair, the hair abnormality will also resolve when you take adequate amount of vitamin C in your diet and supplement as well. And then another sign is bright red hair follicle. Our hair follicles on the surface of the skin contain, contain many tiny blood vessels that supply blood and nutrients to the area so when the body is deficient in vitamin c these small blood vessels become fragile and break easily causing small bright red spots to appear around the hair follicles this is known as perifollicular hemorrhage Re follicular hemorrhage hemorrhage is bleeding and a well documented signs of vit of severe vitamin c deficiency that is it. what is it so you have to take vitamin c nutrient food and then the supplement to help resolve this problem and then spongy spoon spoon shaped fingernails with red spots or lines as fingernails has to be straight it shouldn't burn like um, like a spoon so spoon shaped nails are characterized by their concave shape and often thin and brittle the spoon shaped nails are thin and brittle they are more commonly associated with iron deficiency anemia but have also been linked to vitamin C deficiency. Mostly it's associated with iron deficiency anemia, but research has shown that people who, people with vitamin C deficiency too have it. So the red spot or vertical lines in the nail bed known as splinter hemorrhage may also appear during vitamin C deficiency due to weakened blood vessels that rupture easily. While the, vitam while the visual appearance of fingernails and toenails may help determine the likelihood of vitamin C deficiency, note that it's not considered a diagnostic. It's not considered diagnostic. Okay, that's not a diagnosis. You have to go to the hospital and have it have a proper diagnosis. And dry, damaged skin is also a sign of vitamin C deficiency. Healthy skin contains large amount of vitamin C, especially in the epidermis on the on the skin, outer lay, outer layer of the skin. So vitamin C keeps skin healthy by protecting it from oxidative damage caused by the sun and exposure to poll pollutants like cigarette smoke all the ozone the ozone layer the sun it also promotes collagen production when you take vitamin c it helps promote collagen production collagen keeps your skin looking plump and youthful so if you don't want to have premature wrinkles use sunscreen and take your vitamin c that will help produce um Collagen. Collagen is found in all of our body, in our tissues, our joints, our cartilages. As I think as early as 25 or 35, we start losing collagen. That's why we wrinkle. People wrinkle as they age because their collagen level decrease year in year. Each year, their collagen levels decrease. So there are a lot of collagen supplements now that we can take to help... Um, increase uh, pr pr um, collagen buildup. Build High intakes of vitamin C are associated with better skin quality, while lower intakes are associated with a, hundred, a 
percent increased risk of developing dry, wrinkled skin. While dry, damaged skin can be linked to vitamin C deficiency, it can also be caused by many other factors. So this, this symptom alone is not enough to diagnose a deficiency. Just like I said, you have to go to the hospital and have a blood work done and a thorough physical assessment before any diagnosis can be confirmed. Vitamin C deficiency can also cause easy bruising. Bruising occurs when blood vessels under the skin rupture, causing blood to leak into the surrounding areas. So easy bruising is a common sign of vitamin C deficiency since poor collagen production causes weak blood vessels. vessels. Deficiency-related bruises may cover large areas of the body or appear as small purple that under the skin, like the pictures here I showed before. These are like this one. Bleeding gum when you brush your, your, your feet. And then the skin issue, bruising on the skin, swollen, bruising, skin issues. All these are lack of vitamin C deficiency in vitamin C okay and then slow healing wounds vitamin C deficiency slows the rate of collagen formation it causes wounds to heal more slowly research has shown that people with chronic non-healing leg ulcers are significantly more likely to be deficient in vitamin C than those without chronic leg ulcers. Chronic leg ulcers, poor healing can also be um, a sign of uncontrolled blood sugar diabetes. So, like I said, you need a proper diagnosis to confirm the cause. In severe cases of vitamin C deficiency, Old wounds may even reopen, increasing the risk of infection. Slow wound healing is one of the more advanced signs of deficiency and typically not seen until someone has been deficient for many months. So vitamin C deficiency interferes with it interferes with tissue formation causing wounds to heal more slowly. This is considered an advanced sign of deficiency. So other signs and symptoms would likely appear first before the, um, the skin, before the slow healing wounds. And then weak bones. Vitamin C deficiency can cause, can also affect bone health. In fact, low intake has been linked to increased risk of fracture and osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is when your bones become spongy and breaks easily. Research has found that vitamin C plays a critical role in bone formation. So a deficiency can increase the rate of bone loss. Children's skeletons may be especially affected by vitamin C deficiency as they are still growing and developing. So it's very, very important to pack your children's diet with vitamin C, fruits and vegetables. Like I said, guava has more vitamin C than oranges and lemons. Let them eat more fruits and vegetables, especially the green leafy vegetables. And also bleeding gums and tooth, I've already talked about it. Red swollen bleeding gums are another common sign of vitamin C deficiency. Without adequate vitamin C, gum tissue becomes weakened and inflamed and blood vessels bleed more easily. When you brush your teeth, you shouldn't have bleeding gum. So in advanced stages of vitamin C deficiency, gums may even appear purple and rotten. Oh, that's not good. Eventually, 
teeth can fall out due to unhealthy gums and weak dentin. A calcified inner layer of the teeth. A calcified inner layer of the teeth is called dentin. And then pure immunity. Studies have shown that vitamin C accumulates inside various types of immune cells to help them combat infection and destroy disease-causing pathogens. So vitamin C deficiency is associated with poor immune immunity and a higher risk of infection, including serious, serious illnesses like pneumonia. In fact, many people with scurvy, a disease caused by vitamin C deficiency, eventually die of infection due to their poorly functioning immune system. So when your immune system is poor or low, any infection that can easily be treated can it will may cause that if due to the um, lack of immune um, immune system that um, or low immune system so don't let's take a vitamin let's take vitamin c very seriously let's let's take our vitamin c and make it a point of taking it regularly so when you just cook all your food, your um, cook soup and every. It's good to drink soup and stuff. But remember, by the time our soups are done, all the nutrients, we kill all the nutrients because of the, how long we cook our soup. So let's incorporate fruits and vegetables in our diet. It will help a lot. When fruit is in season, make sure you eat it as much as possible. You can even dice mangoes, whatever fruit, papayas, even vegetables. You can rinse, cut them, wash, and you can rinse them, cut them, and bag them, put them in in freezers, and make smoothies with it. It's it's really high in vitamin C's. And then persistent iron deficiency anemia is also a sign of vitamin C deficiency. Signs of vitamin um, iron deficiency anemia include it include paleness, fatigue, trouble breathing during exercise, trouble breathing during exercise because of inadequate blood supply. Blood contains oxygen, so if your blood supply is inadequate, you won't when you exercise you need more your cells requires more oxygen for exercise dry skin and hair headache and spoon shaped fingernails low levels of vitamin c may contribute to iron deficiency anemia by reducing the absorption of iron from plant-based foods and negatively affecting iron metabolism kale is really high in in vitamin um, it's really high in vitamin c too and it helps absorb um it helps absorb iron it helps to absorb iron as well so if you lack in it kale and parsley especially parsley it's plant-based non-heme iron so it really helps increases the absorption of non-heme iron and prevents iron deficiency anemia so you need to eat parsley i don't eat parsley a lot but i'll start incorporating parsley in my diet so iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia will make you tired when you exercise as well vitamin c deficiency also increases the risk of excessive bleeding which can contribute to anemia if iron Deficiency anemia persists for a long time with no obvious causes. It may be wise to check your vitamin C levels. You have to go to the hospital to do that. And then fatigue and poor mood. When you have you are tired, extreme tiredness, tiredness, your mood will change. So two of the earliest signs of vitamin C deficiency are fatigue and poor mood. My daughter laughs at me whenever I say poor. She said the way I say it. 
these symptoms can even appear even before a full-blown deficiency develops so the fatigue and poor mood can appear before you are even diagnosed with vitamin c deficiency while fatigue and irritability may be some of the first symptoms of some of the first symptoms to appear they typically resolve after just a few days of adequate iron adi sorry adequate intake or within 24 hours of high dose supplementation and then unexplained weight gain vitamin c may help protect against obesity by regulating the release of fat from fat cells reducing stress hormones and decreasing inflammation so research has found a consistent link between low intake of vitamin c and excess body fat but it's not clear whether it's is a cause and effect relationship so that one is not really clear but research has found a consistent link between low intake of vitamin C and excess body fat. Low blood um, levels of vitamin C have been linked to higher amount of belly fat, even in normal weight individuals. So while excess body fat alone is not enough to indicate vitamin C deficiency, it may be worth examining after other factors have been ruled out. And then the last but not the least is chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Vitamin C is one of the body's most important water-soluble antioxidants. It helps prevent cellular damage by neutralizing free radicals that can cause oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. So oxidative stress and inflammation have been linked to many chronic illnesses, including heart disease and diabetes. So reducing levels is likely beneficial. Low intake of vitamin C have been linked to higher levels of inflammation and oxidative stress, as well as increased risk of heart disease. One study found that adults with the lowest blood levels of vitamin C were nearly 40% more likely to develop heart failure within 15 years than those with the highest blood levels, even though they were not deficient in vitamin C. So, like I said, vitamin C is very important. It boosts your immune system, helps with your mood, prevents spontaneous bleeding, helps absorb non iron and prevent iron deficiency anemia before i go let me um, say fresh fruits and vegetables are excellent source of vitamin c and should prevent deficiency when consumed on a daily basis supplementing with vitamin c is not toxic but may cause unpleasant side effects at high doses vitamin c is not toxic but when you take it in high doses too you might have um, stomach ache and stuff like that it's not good for everybody so just like any supplement talk to your doctor first before you start taking any vitamin let me leave you here angie talks family remember the page name is angie talks if you are new you are new to this platform welcome it's a health and wellness platform and we do motivation inspiration and mindset augmentation topics as well i am your 21st century virtual nurse call me 21st century virtual nurse and let me calmly and simply respond hello how are you doing Bye for now, everybody.